Um, Dom Shee. He seems unlucky. To, to a little bit unlucky, yeah. That the, um, you know, Luke Shuey comes back in and um, fortunately Dom goes out, so he hasn't done a lot wrong, but at the same time he's probably not playing at his best at the moment, so his body's good and he's definitely available, but um, probably just needs to go back and get a bit more touch and um, that's the way it is at the moment. So does he sit out this weekend or are you play him in East Perth? Well, East Perth's Monday. So they'll all play on Monday. Um, what, what sort of area do you need him to work on? Oh, look, we don't have a player. It, it's it's um, Luke Shuey's an A-grade talent. So when he comes back in the side, someone's going to go out. So, um, you know, Dom's been back for a couple of weeks. He's been a little bit scratchy in some areas without going into specifics. And, um, you know, it only happened to Hutch earlier in the year when uh, he did a really good job on Selwood. And then I think we had another midfield come back in. So... Um, that's just the way it is. So we're not. It's not a um, punishment. It, um, he just got squeezed out. Imagine uh, Dom. How happy to take the news when? Is that okay? Yeah, it's it's. Um, you know, it's not the end of the world. So he's. We think he's right in there in our best side. So, um, but at the moment he's he's not. So, um, it's not the first time it's happened to someone this year for us. So we'll. We'll work through that. It's a role-driven environment, and the, the guys know that and understand it. You must enjoy that, though, given the fact that there's that competition for spots that someone that everyone thinks Dom's probably in the best 22, that he's, he's not, and he's still got things to work on. Oh, yeah, no, I don't enjoy it. Um, but it's the it's our industry, isn't it? It's going to only play 22, and uh, getting some numbers back into our side is important. You know, Luke's an important player for us. We managed to get it done without Luke, and Dom's been part of that, so... That's just where it's at. You're always talking about that growth and needing to stand up. Did that impress you in the last three weeks without Luke and probably one of your, your prime on ballers <laughs> to, to get the job done without him? Well, yeah, I've said this a, a bit. We've been really trying to be a collective, and in particular the midfield. So with, with Elliot, Elliot coming in and, and Nick and Scott playing their part and Jack Redden, uh, Gaff's role's different this year. And So in the past, we've probably relied on Luke too much, uh, along with Pritter. So to have more of a balanced look and to, to win some games without him is, is a great sign for our development. How do you guard against complacency this week? Because everyone expects you to win. And yeah, uh, complacency, I don't think we've achieved anything that gives us the right to be complacent. You know, we've had a good run. Uh, we've won some games, which is great for, the, for our goal, but we haven't, you know, accomplished anything yet. So it's, it's been almost half a year. We've, we're playing some pretty good footy and I, I think the maturity of the players a win, lose, or draw, they'll they'll play with the right attitude this week. The young kids as well, obviously they're new to the system and probably think it's easy at the moment. I don't think they think it's easy. I think our kids have got, our younger players have got um, some real maturity in the way they play and they understand what their role is when they come in and I'm not seeing a naive, immature group in particular with the kids and even the guys who aren't playing in the, in the scenes at the moment I don't see uh, anyone cutting corners or anything like that because it's just, it's, honestly it's just... We don't have that right. What drives that? Well, the leaders drive that, and you know we internally have been trying to live that way for a while, and we've been together a while as well, and we've had some ups and downs. So 15 was a, was a really good season for us, and perhaps have learnt some lessons from how we handled that. Albeit, I thought they handled that okay as well. But they're all a little bit older and a bit more wiser, and understand where we're at and where the comps at at the moment. It's not as good or as bad as you. You, you see it, so, and our players are aware of it. it, is it does it help when your younger players are second year players as well, as opposed to first year players like Waterman was here last year? We all yeah, that's a good question. I, I suppose what it does help is the the longevity of the player in in his, his second year, but first season of football. So Waterman and Rioli missed a lot of lot of play last year, a lot of footy. I anticipate they will be able to hold for longer than a first year. So like a Petrocelli or Ainsworth or Brander if he comes in or Oscar Allen, those guys, there is a bit of a shelf life. It's hard to come in and just play AFL every week, but I think Waterman and Rioli and these guys have got that extra year of growth and maturity, so they seem to be handling the workloads a bit easier. Is, is Andrew Gaff at a new level, do you think, right now? Um, he's playing pretty good football, yeah. He's, he's, well, he's just, his role's changed slightly, which um, everyone knows. I'm not going to pump him up too much. We just uh, 
He's going all right. Um, he's going better if he signs with us. <laughs> he's not the sort of person that's affected too much by being pumped up, though, is he? No, well, he's been around a while. He's you know, he's an Australian. He's he, he's mature. He's got standards, and they're not driven by uh, perception or expectations. They're his own personal standards, and he's he's a, he's a competitor. So he wants to win. Why is he impacting games? Or well, I think he's always impacted games. So you know, um, the fact is, there's there's been a slight change in how we go about it in our midfield. His opportunities to play on ball are greater this year, and he's benefiting from a really good balance. So his inside works definitely increased this year. But that comes with opportunity. And how fine of line is it to tell Willy Rioli to go out there and do his thing, and then try and temper that? little bit of a lapse in concentration when he does something where he taps Ray Chamberlain or gives away a 50 metre? Oh, yeah, the, I don't think the tap on the backside's anything other than what it was. I don't think that's a pattern. So I'll, he can go out and do his thing. He's OK. Is, uh, does that sort of mystify a little bit the, the so-called careless conduct when it's probably actually the most careful thing that the player's done? Oh, not really. No, look, that was I think they handled that pretty well, the AFL. I mean, the only thing we, we keep exploring is, you know, Ray did run from a long way out to come over and indicate that there was a 50 and the space was closed up so you know Willie's got to be careful and um, we've got to be careful we don't go over the top with it or something like that he did cop a fine for it uh, we'll take that and, and move on you uh, changed Nelson for Marston that seems to be the, the yep. spot a bit more defensive than midfield wing what's the thought process there um, without going into the, the strategy of it all we've we've got some players who play down back who can play in the midfield so we've got a little bit of flexibility there to play that role with with Jetta, of course. He's most of his career has played on the wing, and Duggan and um, and Nelson as well. So we've got a bit of flexibility there, so we can we think we can cater for it with someone in the side. How's Liam Ryan going? There's mentioned earlier this week that he might get a run in the waffle. Yeah, not this week, but we anticipate if all goes well, he'll play the week after. So he's training fully with a with a group now, and he's up and about, which is great for us. And um, Hopefully we can see him back in the seniors pretty soon. But he, he'll, he'll play uh, over the bye round uh, or just after the bye. How's he, sorry, how's he coping with the rehab? He must be itching to... Well, it's all new to him, the rehab. <laughs> so uh, swimming is new to him and uh, bikes. I don't know how much bike riding he's done over, over the journey, but uh, he's committed to it. Yeah, I'm really impressed with the fact that it's been a difficult process to come in your first year and, and have to be in rehab for eight weeks. Uh, he's handled it really well. So he's come back, he's looking pretty fit, and he's still got the same zip. So um, hopefully we see the same type of player. Uh, is he, would you say he's ahead, ahead of schedule? I think it was originally around 12 weeks. Uh, it's hard to tell with those things. It's in osmosis. You, it's just guided by you know ticking a box every week, and you, before you progress, you've got to tick a certain box. And he's probably a week or two in front, but being a lighter body, helps I think in that case so I'm not surprised he's coming back a bit early. With what he adds would you say when he is fit and going he steps back into the side? Oh, we'll have to look at it I think um, his best is probably in our best 22 but you know he's got to play his role and there's guys playing his role pretty well at the moment so once again if that happens and um, when it if and when we'll, we'll worry about it then but at the moment he's he's still a couple of weeks away. Are you surprised by the demise of St Kilda this season? Oh, no, I'm not talking about demise. Uh, I, we look at the, every team at their best and they touched us up last year towards the back end of the season and they beat us by 30 in contested ball in the last quarter and, um, yeah, we just got ahead 100 and outworked. So we know what their best looks like and uh, several of those players are playing this weekend. So no, um, no complacency, no talk like that for us. Mm -hmm.